start with circles that you can find on the tops of anything that you drink. And I save all these and I save them for my students so that I can arrive at the college with lots of caps. And today we're going to play with the caps and see what we want to do. Um, I'm going to suggest that we just work from the center out and um, just play around with tracing around these, either using them this direction or I could turn this over and then I have one that's a little bit smaller. This is reminding me of the old-fashioned, I guess they still use them, thimbles. Um, this one I love because this is a type of water that comes from Italy and I was in Santa Fe drinking it. They brought it to the table and it just seemed so pretty. But now I find I can get it at my local market so I don't know how special it is but it brings me happiness. So whatever brings you happiness, whatever brings you some joy, um, be sure to include that in whatever you're drawing. Um, Santa Fe is such an art center but yet a very small town that's very easy to run around and then watch sunsets at the end of the day. It's just a beautiful place to be and that's another thing you want to focus on when you're drawing is being in a beautiful place, letting the magic of making circles take you to a beautiful place. Now we no longer have to worry about this paper jumping out and asking us what we're going to do because we just like we're playing some kind of little game with chips or something we're just moving things around. I have some bigger piece bigger circles too that I've pulled out so again, maybe the, an easy way is just to hold it from the center and go around like that. And this gives us a chance without worrying about it. It gives us a chance to make things happen without thinking them through or thinking about what we're going to do. And uh, I often say, think with your pencil. And in this case, it's think with your charcoal. This is a piece of vine charcoal. It's a burnt vine, burned vine. And I can um, play around with it. And what I like about using it is that if I come in here with watercolor or any other medium, and in this case, I think I want to first start to again change it underneath what I'm going to do with watercolor with colored pencils. So I just like that I've changed it here from a white piece of paper to a pa piece of paper that has a design on it, that has a lot of, uh, a lot going for it right now. And the watercolor may or may not uh, merge. I'm not even really sure what it's going to do. Um, with the colored pencils and again I'm using a very soft colored pencil that's why it's so easy for me to get it on here. Um, I don't have to press hard and I am kind of not pressing hard just guiding this again using a paintbrush grip not a writing grip that's always helpful because it helps me actually see what I'm doing and gives me more of an opportunity to use more of my arm and less of my fingers. Uh, sometimes this is just a great thing to practice is putting down some fairly even tonal value but I want to assure you that it doesn't need to be even. Switching into some blue I'm going to switch to another direction and I may or may not fill in the entire circle. Yeah, I think I will. 
And I'm going to go for that here too. And kind of looking at this stripey thing here, I'm thinking of making some stripey things here. Now, again, I really don't know where I'm going with this or what I'm doing. I'm conducting it like an investigation. And furthermore, you can think of conducting this as a study. And this is something that I think is important in art. It was, they always say I'm making a study in the old days. Like I'm trying something out to find out how to draw this hand for this painting. Or I'm drawing something to understand how an apple sits on the table. Or I'm studying water. One of my students is studying water now and she took some pictures through like a ball stone into the pond or the pool and around sunset time photographed that so that the light would be coming from the side and she'd get to see these ripples because she had drawn a dragon and she wanted the dragon to be in the water and she wanted concentric circles to be working out from the dragon and in this case we wouldn't be looking at the concentric circles this way but this is something that we're working on right now that relates to the idea of concentric circles working out into broader ways. Uh, this is something that artists think about. They'll think about what the associations are with what they're doing. And you don't have to think about any of that. And a lot of the thing, time, artists don't preconceive or pre-think these things. They make studies, they try things, and ultimately they really are not going to be able to see what is going to be able to happen without trying it out. So these are actual physical materials that we're using today. And if you have lids, you can trace them with anything, including the colored pencils. And you can start to play with those lines too if you want. Let's see if I have one that's a little bit smaller. This is not, it's more than a little bit smaller. But now I'm doing circles within circles. And I can come back and use some of my bigger ones to encircle other ones that I've made out of the charcoal. One of the things that's a big deal in education with art is talking about the variations and the contrasts of similarity where you have a lot of similar things and here we have circles but we have contrast in the size of the circles and now we have contrast in the way the circles are being made. Additionally, I've fired up some colored pencil. Oops, <laughs> here I've fired up some colored pencil and here I've already fired up, meaning put water on, putting a little bit more water on now the um, watercolors and let's just see wetting my brush just starting out with a little guy here bringing a lot more water to it let's see how this works there's a little thought to me I'm just going to take this where in between these lines of the Prismacolor color pencil now I'm going to just leave that there. I don't want to test it out right there. I'm going to take, meaning I didn't go over the top of this colored pencil. I think I want to go take some more yellow here and go over the top of this circle with the colored pencil going over the top of the Prismacolor. And I'm also picking up some of the charcoal with that. And if I go in there and dab into my charcoal, 
I'm going to kind of stabilize the charcoal. Once the charcoal gets wet, and I think particularly wet with not only water, but with the paint of the watercolor. Now I'm going back in here. It does seem to float a little bit on top of it, but we'll just see on that. This is what you can do now, just continue with what we've got started here. And it's your choice. And that's one of the biggest things about making art is making choices and about where you're going to put things. But that doesn't mean you kind of make the choice sometimes just with what you're doing and then with by what with what you've done. So now I've come in here and very much upped the what's called the saturation, which is just how bright this color is and how how deep and rich the color is. It now by contrast <laughs> sets a tone for the whole rest of the composition. And I'm going to repeat it over here. One of the things when you think you've really done too much um, is you can repeat something either in the amount that you've done it or in a lesser amount. And here I am with an orange that I think is not quite as red as the other orange. And I'm just coming in there with it. If I continue with some very intense colors, um, <laughs> you're always kind of on the edge when you start doing this kind of stuff. Uh, but one of the ways to understand what can happen is to let things happen. <laughs> so I definitely am letting things happen. The, um, the whole composition is kind of happy with this blue, and I am too. If I want to cut down some of this orange, I can come in with the blue, and that's going to neutralize it. It's going to turn it into more of a gray, going a little bit more of a gray. And now this is the biggest guy on the block. This is the most saturated color here. So some could even say that this is a study in color saturation and color mixing at this point and the layering and integration of these three media. The watercolor, the colored pencil, and the charcoal. No, baby. 